teams straight up go for the Lucian ban. Uh, because obviously Lucian, you can flex it, but like Nami needs Lucian. Lucian doesn't need Nami. I think there's the eternal dichotomy discussed between those two champions. Um, yeah, in response, no surprise to see Akali getting taken away from Ronaldo. Obviously, previously saw him absolutely running amok against, uh, I believe it was Solari they played against most recently. It was against the Vagar as well, just able to dodge out from those cages continuously. Zeri's still on the table if they don't ban it. I feel like both of these teams should have been watching the previous game. You probably <laughs> don't want to give that champion over if they can play it. Guys, screw whatever draft plan we had. We're picking Seri mid and we're playing at AP because that W, oh my lord. Oh my lord, indeed. Um, but I think they're definitely looking for a specific pick. By banning a wake win on red side, they know that that's not what they're looking for themselves, but they don't want to give it away on the second rotation um, because they have something else in mind. If it's going to be a volley bear for momentum, uh, as we've seen oh, kind of be no. the trend today, um, that's not going to be the case this time around. It's finally going to be the Wukong. So many times have we seen Wukong today on red side. Finally, it's Kareem prioritized takes Viego on blue side instead. I feel like Kareem has to take Viego here. He's taken it every single time. It's obviously very beneficial into the Wukong. I think the matchup's fine completely. I feel like you take that, you take a support as well. Maybe a Rakan for Wagner that we've seen him so often on. They could also just take the Zeri, like we've been previously saying, uh, would be intelligent. That with the Viego as well makes yeah. sense. So usually on the on the second one two rotation, you want to save support for three unless you really have a like a power pick you want to pick into the opponent because AD carries matters, yes, but in terms of bot lane priority, um, having that support counter pick actually matters more. So when there's prior picks like Lucian, like Zeri up and available, that could be huge. If this comes in, I think Twitch is going to be the second champion. Renata, Twitch, Wukong seems like a very yeah. scary composition. And yeah, I think that's exactly what they're looking for. We've already seen Cody Son pilot this two days ago in the first days of this Super Week, where it actually looked close, where it looked like they're about to take their second game of the season, but it completely faltered for them in the late game. Yeah. See oh, the there we have it here. again. No, it's coming through. It's coming no through. No surprise. No surprise to see some, uh, Smiley's Callista. We spoke about it in the pregame alongside Inax, one of the more prominent Callistas that we've seen in the league. And I like this. We go. I feel like a lot of their games, the games that we saw them fought when it was that weird kind of adaptation where they stopped playing the aggressive bot lane. They started playing like Senna, Tom Kent, Senna, Seraphine, and stuff like this. Nice to see Smiley and Vigram have a bit of a stronger 2v2 setup for themselves. Not to say that Senna and TK are, are slouches, but it really lacks that ability to go hyper aggressively. I'm sorry if this is putting you on the spot, um, but so far, three of the champions, uh, LDLC, drafted themselves. Ask them through from Go. Do you remember the last two champions? Yes. Orn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one. Nautilus. No, Leona. Leona, Leona, exactly. Leona, Leona. Yeah, but yeah, you had the correction coming through. How funny would it be if that's the exact same draft we see from Go after they just... It'd be on opposite, on opposite side as well. They would be on opposite sides. Uh, LeBlanc and Aurelia gets taken out. So I think that's some of the matchups that might be good into the series. So they're kind of just revealing that flex. But Seri is so, such a good champion as well at the moment, just due to the fact that you can play her top. We've already seen that. You can play her mid. You'll still go for the AD or AP build. And she can put AD carry. And then you flex Callista top instead. Like there's so many movement or different possibilities for it. Of course, I do think this Callista is going down towards the bottom lane. Um, but let's see if they're actually looking for that aggressive lane with the Leona. It wouldn't be too bad here, like, really getting that aggression down onto watching a mobile champion like the Twitch. Nautilus or Leona looking really good in this instance. Oh, don't do it. Interesting, but it's still aggressive. Also still aggressive. It checks the boxes. It's engaged. Wouldn't be too bad. Yeah. Um, so good mobility, not too tanky, and can be kind of awkward to pilot into the Wukong. Because if you're trying to get in towards the backline, then the Cyclone will just stop your dash immediately. So you quite often rely on a flying on Rakan when you're playing into the champions you're seeing right here. But obviously for the 2v2, loads of mobility where you can dash in, dive out, still be with the Kalista. Kalista stealing out damage. And you can kind of just rotate the prioritization of where the enemy is attacking. And because of that, you can just solo down one target yourself. Yeah, completely. I think with some of the Slay for Blinds, obviously going to be seeing the Nara as well. That's something we've seen so often. Probably going to be an Ari or maybe an Azir for Rangjin, two champions that we've seen him default to quite often. I think would be helpful in terms of some of the champions. But we do see he does have the ability to pick that blind into the Zeri because now we see it's more clear that the Zeri is going mid lane. Go. Ooh, not bad either here. Four short range champ. Not okay, actually. If this Seri is going AP, I'm not going to call her short range because the poke she's coming out is by no means short. Mm. But into the likes of Callista, Rakan, and Viego, uh, Vega uh, is such a great champion. They might be sending the Zeri top here. 
Well, we're holding on for our heroes so far. Let's see what we're going through with Ronaldo. Yeah, and they're going to. You're completely right here. But that just goes back to some of the strong um, flexibilities available with Seri. We talked about it. Not the first time we've seen her top lane either. Functions very well into normal tanks that has a shield because she can take away some of that shield and get extra movement speed. You're not going to get that into the Nah, but it's still a ranged matchup where you can be able to get some priority over the lane, albeit I haven't actually seen the Seri versus Nah matchup yet. Usually I see it picked into the tanks. I mean, to be fair, we maybe could have predicted this as well because Nuki obviously played the Zeri top into Sion, which is where you illustrated to me the shield-stealing nature of that matchup, but obviously not going to be able to get that same way in this matchup, but still going to be able to create a lot. It's, I think that from that point onwards, especially with the fact that they've gone Zoe, uh, I think Zoe's probably going to be solo AP and it's going to be more of the AD setup. So actually, it is going to be a shorter range composition uh, somewhat into that Vega, which might present some problems for you. Yeah, but I still feel like that you're... You're right, it can, and specifically in the late game, but even in the late game, if you reach that mark, you can never really count out how much threat a bubble will have. I think there's a lot of pressure uh, on towards, of course, uh, the mid lane of Go here being on the Zoe, um, because in that late game, the game is almost impossible for the Callista to play. Like, in an ideal scenario for Go, they get the bot lane rolling, they rely on rotating the bot lane around, um, specifically because, like, Nah doesn't do too well being on the weak side. Yes, he does have that Mechanar that can persuade ganks, but when you're playing up against a Zoe that can bubble you, or a stunts coming through for Viego being charmed up by the Rakan, it can be difficult piloting, and also just resetting the acro with Callista ultimates. Um, so if they can get the bot lane through, it's actually going to open up a lot of leeway towards the rest of the map, whereas from the side of Mirage here, so much good late scaling. Even a front-to-back team fight is looking stellar from them. They have to now, they have to Wukong, they have to Twitch in the back line. So much range to play around with. If they snowball from the side of Mirage, this is actually looking quite good. Yeah, but I think in contrast, Go are a team that we see time and time again with this Viego for Kareem. They're constantly able to find these early skirmishes around these early dragons and almost like mind control the enemy into uh, going for these fights. Whether or not they can do that, we're going to have to see here. But there's a bit of there's a big contrast here. We're going to be seeing the game rather shortly. Got any more football references let me know uh but in any case we are on to the rift now for our final final game of the super week Google. it's been a long week of fanatical displays back and forths upsets and heartbreaks but this is our final game it's going to be team go versus mirage el yandra what do you think Gulborg? outside of the draft how do you fancy mirage's chances obviously one and seven it's fair to declare them the underdogs in this matchup I, I most definitely. And while this draft is looking way better than the ones they had yesterday, uh, drafting was not always the issues from the side of Mirage. It's in, in quite a big contrast, it was actually their in-game decision making and how they're not always on the same page. I think they have a really easy to execute composition here. Like, generally speaking, don't think they could have asked for much more. It's very simple what you want to do. Um, in a teamfight scenario, they pretty much should never lose unless it's played out a little wrong from their side. So. Really hoping that we'll see some signs of life here from Mirage because they desperately need it. We talk about the matchup uh, between them and Oplan, uh, the fear of relegation towards the end of the split. Uh, something you never want to experience as a team or as a player is getting relegated. So these games matters quite a lot. Yeah, absolutely agree with you there, Goldborg. Don't want to be staring down some of these LFL2 teams, uh, snapping at the heels almost for Mirage and for Oplan. Up against Go now, a team that is middle of the pack, has showed very dominating performances against some of our higher tier teams. As we see Nuku might be running a little bit of disturbance on the top lane buff, but it has walked away somewhat. It's just some of the extra luxury you get here, Seri. You don't actually need to see them to get your auto attacks through, of course. So if you just sit there and spam, hopefully you're hitting some of your auto attacks. Not going to be the case this time around against Bet Lulu. He was ready for it, but either way, top lane leashes. That means enemy top lane that gets priority on the wave push, but... SNR, give it a boomerang, give it a little auto attack, and you're back to a pretty much even wave state. Smiley, it's traded onto rather aggressively here. Ignite was actually burned by Raxo in that trade. See that come out, but it's not come to too much of a fruition there. You see Vagnum and Smiley doing a good job of dodging in and out here. Are going to have that combat summoner advantage. Important to note is that Smiley does have that cleanse for Raxo. You see the flash forward from Vagnum there. Lovely bit of aggression there. Going for a few more attacks. Q did go wide, but. 
Also, someone is being burned now. Raxo not having that flash is going to be big for when Kareem finishes his clear now. If they can get the wave in a good position, it is going to get frozen just in front of the turret. And a lot of this is going to come down to the junglers as well. But I would always go for that trade uh, as the Rakan as well. You got Hex Flash apparently in this context. We don't see that too often. But even then, Renata versus Rakan, you're way more mobile as an AD carry. But I'm going to take my focus away from that. As you can see, Karim, he's actually going for an invade against the red buff too. Vagnarum. I'm taking a little bit of damage here. Cody Sun might flash forward. It's fine. He needed one more auto and E. It's fine. If you take it out, doesn't go for it. But the wave state not fine at this point in time. You wanted to be able to equalize on the early advantages, and they've just been taking too many bad trades here. Even if they go in for kill here, Vikram is just so low that surely a bailout will come through from Rax, so that will just enable a revive, and then they'll win the trade from Mirror side. So the Twitch here actually taking control in the early game, which you would not expect usually when you see a Rakan Callista going up against a Renata and Twitch. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like just a uh, slight bit of overaggression in terms of trading out that flash, but then going for that trade. I think the most important one was the one where he took around one or two turret hits, and that really swung the lane back in Mirage's favor, means he can get that crash in. At least I'm going to come back to base now, come out of base now with two daggers. Kareem's gone for a rather aggressive Raptors invade, has kind of sussed out. It's a good bit of intuition as well, because... I'm not massively sure he would have spotted out off first clear. Wukong, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I did not actually pay attention to the clear of the jungle in the early game. I was too focused on some of the early shenanigans we saw uh, with some of the invading. But what I am paying attention to right now is majority of the map being covered in red wards from the side of Gamers Origin instead here. Um, you can clearly see that they will have entrance to the Raptors, Crocs, and they have the Scotland as well. So through process of, el of elimination, if he's not on the bot side, well either on the top side or in your own jungle right now where you can see now it's actually Team Go that's taking some control or it's Mirage rather taking some control themselves moving around the map Raxo and Memento together here Memento getting those wolves away getting level 4 and should get out without being spotted here and if they are by ward there is a sweeper from Raxo I'm going to correct you now just so you don't do it again because you might run into a bit of a bit of disturbance if you do Gamers Origin is their original name. I, I did correct myself. Now. Good team go after. I, I did see it as well. Yeah. I was like, all right, next time I'm talking about it, team go. Sure. It's, ba it's bad habits. It. It's a yeah. story well, team I mean, in the LFL. Well, I think that's important to kind of touch into as well. We talk about the storied origins of Gamers Origin. Now, talk, now called Game Team Go. Obviously being at many NEU Masters themselves. Now in a position whereby middle of the pack, still able to make playoffs, most splits, but... And they're falling by the wayside to some of these other stronger teams. Now as a split for them. It's pretty much the same roster bar the in introduction of Vignorum. Can they consolidate? Can they move up towards that upper echelon of the pack? It would be a good game to do it against Mirage, a team that has struggled so far throughout the split and never making an EU Masters, never really making their mark on a playoffs run either, dwindling towards the bottom end of the pack. Oh yeah, and I think there are so many expectations coming into this team, especially for Spring, where they had such a good start, Mirage beating out K-Corp, and that was kind of just the highlight of the split, you know, it looks so good, they beat K-Corp, they're in the talk of the town for a week, and then it started faltering from them, and they never really hit that mark again. Um, so, I think, at best, if they can still squeeze themselves in towards playoff, towards the second round, dropping off the LFL, of course that's going to look great, um, but more importantly, if you can get yourself out of relegation, that to me is the big goal for Mirage. That was like a Martin Scorsese line from you there, Corvo. You're like, one week, you're the talk of the town. The next, you're dead. <laughs> I love that from you. Just giving us a little tale of uh, the tragedy of Mirage um, is a Darth Gulborg on the stream. And they're going to be hard-pressed to kind of find an in insidious uh, affair against Go here, a team okay, that kind of okay. weathered the storm. <laughs> That was a good little bit of work. Uh, yeah, but I feel like you called me Darth Vader just to set yourself up where Darth Vader didn't matter. But now, what is mattering is Karim flashing forward. Oh, it's a massive stun here from Raxo Bailout. Bailout. It's going to mean he lives for a little bit longer. They find the return kill. The ignite is just about enough, but one for one. Karim gets the passive here. It's first blood that goes over to Twitch, and it's Rakan who picks up the kill. I'd much favor that trade if I was Mirage. I would agree with you right here. Twitch getting that first blood, huge. We already talked about it. Cody Son, he needs to be the late game scaling AD carry that we're relying on. If you can get him a get head in the early game, even better. You don't have to worry about the Callista. Momentum in the mid lane. Oh, Ronaldo's going to have to flash away from the event horizon. The little gank from Memento. And we're starting to see Mirage showing some signs of life in this early game, being proactive where other teams haven't. What we need to see now is this crucial thing that we tracked throughout the day, Goldborg. Ronaldo, no flash available. Very immobile without it. Will he be punished in this next five-minute window? 
Yeah, I think that's going to be curious. It is harder sometimes with Zoe if you have to kind of close the gap with a flash, but Memento being fairly close to that level 6, of course, can look for it. And you're playing against the Vaker. Like, this setup cannot be much easier. He even got the Predator, Lucidity Boots as the first item rush. Rangjun, I'm sure we'll finally see a revisit here. I can only imagine it to come. You almost feel as if they have to. And where other teams have failed, Mirage really have to accelerate through this angle. It's the darkest timeline where we're relying on Mirage to be the one to execute on these recent times. <laughs> oh, I'm down to Flash being down. In the LFL Cinematic Universe, the alternate timeline, Mirage are the ones to finally capitalize on the immobile mage Flash being burned <laughs> in the early game. Can they do it? This summer, one team, Mirage, Don Jake and Goldborg, will they find it? Why'd you, why'd you have such an accent when you were saying my name? I kind of like that, actually. I've, I've not really heard that G be pronounced that what way did towards I do? the end. Did I do it a bit I, It was the English RG was at the finished? end. I don't know. It was kind of like a pirate saying it towards the end. <laughs> well, Goldborg, you do know from our time playing Phasmophobia together that no, I can I do, do that pirate that. voice. Oh, don't do it, Goldborg. Don't get me started, because <laughs> you know I won't finish. Uh, speaking of things that are trying to be finished, Reem on the Rift Herald here. Not able to do much more than a scratch here. Obviously, resources being devoted up into the top side means he can't quite do that. We spoke about New Q on this very top lane as well, being a pick he picked up yesterday as well. More going for a uh, kind of a... a, a, dra a dra uh, blah, 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 blah. And for a vamp set early. Yeah, shield bow build, usually what we see coming out here. Ronaldo, ooh, cheeky! With the jump over the portal, just frame perfect there. Vikram's going to be spotted on a ward bot lane priority wasn't necessarily gained. You can see it's a neutral state. This is something that Mirage is going to capitalize on. They can push it in with Cody Sun now. They can move the rest of the members up afterwards. But not too many objectives to be taken for Mirage right now. And they're not making a move on towards the Rift Hell, which is actually quite interesting. And when you take into account the fact that Ronaldo doesn't have flash, Graham doesn't have flash, if you skirmished around this, that Wukong, that Na, you had Vega, I feel like that could have been favorable for Mirage. We're ticking down now. Ronaldo's on about half of his cooldown. 2.30 is the... Uh, it's quite similar, actually, paired up with that Dragon Timer as well. You really want to see Memento and Raxo roam around, try and match the aggression that Kareem and Wagner have tried to, uh, emitted on this game so far. And punish that. Certainly not going to come from the bot lane. Smiley, both summoners as well. E over the wall. So it's just going to walk out around that. Double team taking a little extra experience. You can see the vision control as well. They gained themselves a little bit on towards the wolf's bush and on towards this river here. Memento now in a position where he could try and capitalize on this flash we've talked about, but Ronaldo is keeping his distance and he's closing the window as soon as it opens. Absolutely. We've seen a lot of teams with these windows. They'd rather just jump out of them rather than actually utilize them. <laughs> um, but uh, fortunately, Mirage still has that window in the mid lane really can't emphasize it enough how that needs to be found but with the constant waves being pushed i think it is going to be more the case that they're just constantly getting this priority it's a good event horizon there but an e is found rakan vagnum's off to the side here Was that might find the engage horizon? not too sure i feel like the no Zoe is, uh, uh, it's not great yeah, it's quite telegraphed in terms of where she's going to be jumping from uh, ranked him i thought it was more reactive uh, than anything of course there but couldn't really uh, equalize on it with the fact that Ragnarum was making his way up towards that mid lane, joined by Kareem as well. Uh, and that Rift Herald is still in hand. It's going to be curious to see where they want to utilize it. So far, they don't really have a point of attack. And I just think that mid lane is going to be the best option. Set up that push in, get some plating, and then be ready for the second Rift Herald to just really uh, take down that turret immediately. Yes. Oh, Borg, that is the case. So, now a minute, we are now a minute away from that Ocean Dragon. It's time for Go to try and build upon that condition. We can see Raxo here moving in, getting a little bit of vision control. I'd expect for me a setup that I would like to see is Kareem move into this mid lane. Wait, 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 Just wait, around wait. 40. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. The Ocean Drake has actually already been taken, so that the fact that it's was displayed oh. as an Ocean Drake here means it's something different. And that lets us play a game. What Drake Hextech. is this? No, it's the second it's one. It's the second one. We still haven't gotten the, the uh, map. What, who do you think out of the four Drakes available is going to be? Yeah, Hextech. Look, it's Hextech. I think Hextech. Okay. I think because it's I'm feeling a cloud here I don't know why but I'm feeling a cloud I think it's going to be cloud it's Hextech and we reveal it in the dragon pit what is it actually observers what is it let us know I'll oh, see oh, wait I can't see. wait what is it it's Hextech oh, it is Hextech wait how'd you know well, actually, Gulborg, here's a little trick for our viewers at home. If that you do see that bug, it's always Hextech. So I always knew I was going to be right. Oh my god, you've absolutely rigged the works. competition. 
well, you know, it's much like the predictions that you did earlier in the, in the day. You have to put the odds in your favor sometimes, and Mirage definitely feeling uh, the Hunger Games. I was going to say, you think this is some kind of Hunger game, but obviously you did with setting yourself up for that reference. Uh, no, I just, I said it and then I realized it was a perfect throwaway, but I couldn't quite find the segue. Speaking of things that might have to get segued, Vigrunner might need to find an escape very quickly here. Memento has found Smiley just before this dragon. It's a very good bit of vision. We spoke about Raxo setting up that vision previously. Ronaldo, can he find the E here? Ronaldo steps up to the penalty box. Doesn't take it though. No shot for now, but Mirage getting that kill for themselves. Don't have a mid lane priority. That may kind of deter Kareem to go in for this one. Let's see how he plays out. Lycrum, no ultimate yet. Now he has, to... has the quickness. Flash forward goes on to Cody Sun here. Resets are so important. Hostile takeover comes out. He doesn't quite manage to dodge it. Can he find the smite here? He's going to get it. Ronaldo lands the E, but it goes on to the clone. And they walk out with a dragon despite Smiley falling at the beginning of that. Oh, yeah. So actually, quite not to say worth it because it's still a big gold lead from the side of Mirage and they were the one who picked up the kill. But the fact that they are not um, deterred from taking a Drake uh, really does wonders for them. Making sure that the late game scaling coming through from Mirage is not being met just yet. So if they were to find a pick for the soul point as well, they can keep their own uh, Drake stacking going. And it is going to be a mountain here. We don't actually have to guess. Thanks, cool book. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Don Jack. <laughs> no worries. He's stating the obvious there. <laughs> uh, things that are things that are most certainly obvious and put into concrete now. Bad Lulu throwing that concrete at New Cube, but he does have that immortal shield bow completed now. And what does this do for this laning phase? I mean, it, it, it just it gives some extra sustain. It's just a standard shield bow. It's not per se something that's going to define this matchup. Of course, Seri likes finishing up a mythic, but more than that. That's really all there is to it, Don Jake. It's not like she's going to be like uh, superpowers having a Gale Force doing banana. Seri dashes into an ultimate there. W's 360 twig shot. It's just a good, solid itemization coming through there. Yeah, obviously, with that double shield bow being uh, garnered for the Zeri and the Sm and Smiley as well, it's going to mean that a lot of that burst damage, especially when you talk about that Vega, is going to be kind of mitigated somewhat. But they still have to be somewhat careful because... Cody Sun, if he finds a good open, will do a lot of damage as well as he gets towards the second item. For the viewers of home, what Jake is talking about when he is saying open is not opening the map, but is uh, when you come out of stealth and you open your damage on towards the enemy, uh, has been deemed an open from the Twitch. Guys, everyone, Gulborg, like everyone watches Rat IRL, they all know what I meant there. I don't think they do. I generally don't think they do. Well, anyway, in any case. Well, that is going to be an important thing. We see a lot of this Bork now. It's a thing that you go, you rush it on the Twitch here, and then you go for your Mythic afterwards. See a lot of that actually is a build you can go whereby... There's a, well, there's a lot of different builds you can go on Twitch, but uh, what build would you like to see this game go for? Well, it's just going to be the normal Blade of the Rune King into the Kraken Slayer. Uh, I think that's yeah. what we usually see. It's the highest damage build as well. You want to be fancy with it? Yes, you can always go Gale Force, but I think, like, for sure as a Twitch, it feels so much better having that Kraken Slayer. Even gone for the Lethal Tempo as well, and you know you're already going to outrange your opponent. So if your spacing is true, which is quite often is for uh, greater Twitch players, well, then there shouldn't be all too much to worry about. You even have to in a Renata as a backup with the Bailout, of course. Completely Mirage having the... I mean, their fingers poised to take up this Rift Herald, second one. Going to be able to use that to get a little bit of damage, but it's not really the case because of how the lanes have gone that they're going to be able to crack that with one. I think it's more the case they're going to have to utilize that around the next dragon. Maybe generate some priority in that mid lane, in that bot lane as well. Then be able to get that turret because you're not going to be able to break it outright. But I'm actually so impressed with Mirage. They're making this game so close already, and we're talking about how they've been in a similar position where they threw Ooh, in the mid game smiley. this time around. Hopefully they won't. Liverpool comes out, quickness has been primed by Vigneron, but the hostile takeover here is oh, the E as trapped. well. Oh, they are most certainly trapped, and Smiley's going to try and find his way over the wall here, but he can't quite do it. Q will get him over just about, not quite. And over-aggression in the bot lane is going to mean that Mirage actually picked themselves up three kills. Yeah, and you see how simple it is. As soon as the Vega joins the fray, team members caught in a cage, and when you don't have Flash, ask the Kalista. Or the, or Rakan rather, and the Zoe in this situation, there's just nothing to do. This champion, right? If you're not playing this champion as a mid laner right now, you're making a big mistake for this patch because there is so much mobility that you're able to shut down and just win draft by. 
Yeah, absolutely. We mentioned it on the day today how the LDLC game yesterday was able to just dismantle Game Wars composition. This is really a pick, like you're saying, into like lower range, like the Callista, like the Ronaldo as well on the Zoe. You just do so much. And go. I feel like Go almost didn't do enough in draft in terms of, oh, Kareem's going in here, going to try and find oh Raxo. Hostel, hostel takeover not available. Bailout has come out here. He's going to get the reset here. Can he find Memento as well? Goes quite low. Does a bit of extra damage here. Ronaldo over the wall as well. Memento is going to walk out here, but it's one kill over to the side of Go. An interaction I'm hoping we're seeing in this game is the fact that if Raxo dies, Karim takes it over and he goes for the bailout on himself, but he then changes form. Uh, he'll still have the bailout on him, so he can get so freaking aggressive um, with this Viego. So I'm hoping we see a, you know, a little cheeky um, play like that coming out for him where it's going to be looking incredibly disgusting. 200 years of gameplay design, of course, being filled into that back there. And obviously Kareem also going for the Blade of the Ruin King, for the Blade of the Ruin King himself there. Um, obviously does massive damage uh, with the amplification of your own Q passive and the Blade passive. Yeah, I think that's very important to consider and I'm glad you brought attention to it. Raxo going to be finding some attention in this bot lane bush if he'd walked a second or so further forward. This dragon now having been spawned is the penultimate dragon of the game, the sole point if they can find it. Memento might have something to say about it as he goes over the wall here. It's going rather low. Ronaldo is going to be stunning him up here. He's trying to take it. Kareem gets it. No, he doesn't. Memento does. And he gets stunned up by the Revent Horizon. And once again, a Goa caught lacking around this dragon area. And Memento finds the smite here. That has to be the most anticlimactic smite steal I've ever seen. Memento was just literally sleeping in front of it and just smited it. That was all there was to it. Crazy stuff, I tell you. And I believe it was actually, you see a little bit of the synergies existing between um, Renata Glask and that Vagar. I believe the initial Event Horizon wouldn't have pulled Kareem in, but I think it was something to do with the Renata Q or W. You'd have to elucidate me as to which one it is. Yeah, the Q is the answer. Pulled him into the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So pulled him into the cage there, which made him unable to get out despite having Flash and Ultimate as well. Ronaldo looking once again for the shot. Does not connect it. Smiley on a flank. Funnily enough, that's an AD carry. We don't see this quite often. It's kind of able to do stuff like this with that Immortal Shield, but has a little bit more HP to work with. Obviously, that shield as well, but it's not going to bear any fruits in the side lane as you see Cody Sun looking aggressively in that stealth. Yeah, Yene Superstar so far. Haven't been able to leave his mark in the European scene just yet, but this is looking like it's the game where he'll finally leave that mark. And here we have it. He's literally sleeping in front of it. They have Callista and. The rent combination oh, no, he just, just, he just doesn't come through probably, and no, he didn't get pulled into it. It was just a great he just, event he horizon. Just no, he just walked into it. Oh, well, that's also another thing. But, you know, the fact that they have the <laughs> Callista and the Viego, you have the Ren combination with Smite, and you fail on executing it. And it, there's actually better synergy between Smiley and Memento. Well, that's a bit ironic. Yeah, a bit ironic. Uh, you know, now I've got that song in my head called Book. And isn't it ironic? Don't you... You know that song? No, I don't know that song. Oh, this is really awkward there. Kareem might be finding a bit of an awkward circumstance here up with Rangjin. They found the one for three. Kareem going to be taking a little bit of turret damage here, but it's great now. They're going to be able to take this tier one turret as well with that demolish from NuQ. You know what they say, if it is for free, then it is for me and Kareem. He's getting up there, taking that first kill for himself. They get the first turret of the game for themselves with Go. Still 3k behind though, but it does allow yourself to create some extra space and some extra pressure. Now having an extra rain, uh, lane, rather, you can push in, push in long range. And what is the game plan for Go with this Zeri pick? Because obviously you see um, with the previous game that we saw Ica playing, it was much more of a, you're always grouping, always trying to get on this poke. Now with the Zeri in the top lane specifically, is it going to try and offer a bit more of a side lane resistance? Are oh, we yeah. going to see it group up for some of these fights? Usually we see it with side lane pressure being the one that you want to like just get free scaling out on a side lane for. And that's kind of the idea. Um, I'm not still not sold on it completely into the NAR. Uh, I still think it has better matchups, but that's what you get when you're kind of flexing it blind and you're revealing the flex already on three right. Um, we saw that they first pick the, uh, I think the Callista. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's of course not going to be as high value in that in some other certain matchups, but most of the time you will see new Q being placed uh, positioning himself on a on a side lane. Yeah, I think positioning himself on the side lane will be the aim of the game, like you're saying there, Gold Borg. But with a minute 40 until that dragon, Go obviously going to be moving towards that sole point. They previously, if you think back to around four or so minutes ago, weren't able to take that. It was a misfire from Kareem. That synergy not quite working out between him and Smiley there. 
We spoke about Go as a team need to find these early skirmishes, and obviously Kareem can be quite enabled oh, on this Viego. Ronaldo might have found something here. Also, Viego is here. But Baron is Baron is available, and if they spend too much time here, you might see Mirage actually pivot towards it. I'm not quite found bad loot. He's going to have Flash available. It's a Flash for Flash here. He does not land as well. Would have liked to see Mirage put out a little bit more pressure towards that top side. Didn't really have a tank for it. Yes, Wukong could have gone for it, but I think... No, actually, no teleports whatsoever. So, yeah, maybe a window where they could have tried and threatened a potential Baron, but they, they played clean. They don't want to go for too much. Break is up in one minute. Maybe that'll be the objective we'll have contested instead. But, I mean, position control... It really was there in the river. You can already see it. It's being lit up by pink wards. Three located in river. One in the barren pit, one in the top side bush, and one in the mid side bush. Then together, uh, if you go a little more defensive, we of course do have that defensive blue buff bush as well. But majority of the control from Mirage is on the top side and on the bot side currently alongside that Drake. It is looking a little better for Team Go at the moment. Of course, that vision is going to be contested and fought for now. It's going to be highly contested for sure. Yeah, we just spoke about that that pressure and that attention being to, put more towards the Baron side for Mirage. If they get their hands on that, they know that they can open up the map more and more with that mid lane turret obviously still being up, being a major stronghold for Go. Go have options though in terms of the dragons they've already built. If they move towards this soul point, they now have another five minutes until they can get to that point whereby they're going to have a lot of... A lot of a, sh a massive shield that's going to help them in regards to that burst from that Vega. Found. I'm bad Lulu here. He doesn't have flash available. And this is a repeat of before. He's not going to be able to get the Mega Nile. Kareem's going to get the reset here. It's a nice little shutdown. And Raja forced to either turn and try and burst the dragon previously, but they're not going to be able to now. Just going to have to try and move towards this mid lane. Try and get that mid lane turret, move that mid lane wave in. Otherwise, they're just going to fall behind in the dragon and in the kill department. Wouldn't be the first time we see Memento opt in for steel here. Blast is available. So is the flash. Memento might fancy his chances, goes over the wall, it is going to be Smiley who gets it. Memento is going to have to flash over the wall. And third dragon of the game, fourth dragon of the game rather, third dragon for Go does go their way. They're going to be very happy with that. Yeah, Kareem and Smiley finally able to layer up the Ren together with the smite there for himself. Not even sure if Kareem actually had the smite coming through, but Smiley was the one who secured it. So they win out here in this exchange, whereas they lost earlier. Now Predator has been popped, they are up towards the top area, but they're not going for a Baron just yet. Resets might be coming through from majority of the members. Are gearing up towards a third item. In Cody Sun, looking to get that Rune Ant Hurricane for himself. Of course, and the Callista, looking for that Rage Blade. Really getting damage though. Absolutely. I think it's now important for Mirage. Don't rest on your laurels. Don't do what so many other teams before you have. Be the saviors of, like we were saying earlier, we're setting them up to be kind of that uh, heroic like figure. I feel like they have pushed their advantages. They've actually found themselves in quite a beneficial position, but Memento certainly hasn't. Has the W over the wall here. Kareem's trying to find a reset, but he's been met. Bailout, 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 bailout. Here. It's not been able to be found. He can't get the reset, though. Vikram just about over the wall here. Last tick of Twitch Poison. Will it do it? Not quite, though. And these are one for one, and they are very lucky to walk out with that because Wagner and dropping there would have most certainly spelt disaster. Yeah, and even if they got the bailout there, jungler dead, jungler re suddenly respawns from the side of momentum. They could probably turn on towards that Baron. I can remember what a fall of well could have been disaster. Is new to flash. You're doing a lot of damage off to the side there. See him starting to ramp up now, building towards that eye edge. Obviously, we spoke about the AP build being prominent, but also that W scaling with that crit is going to mean he's going to have a lot of that in regards to the two items he's built. So far, further to the Infinity Edge, it's going to mean that he does even more damage. And this side lane threat has not really been able to come out for Go just yet. I feel like they've been pushed off a few in a few ways in terms of just the macro state of the game, but they are always able to find their position around these neutral objectives. And the thing is, right now, this game suddenly has become a Mirage Games to lose, which is absolutely incredible when you're thinking about how we started the talk of today. Mirage not been looking too hard in this Super Week, especially not in their game yesterday. This time around, though, they're really looking to put themselves in a winning position. As soon as that Rapidon's death caps come through from Rangjun as well, this Vega. I mean, if one member gets caught up by Event Horizon, they will just die immediately. Not too often we see actually see the Seraphs and Brace get... Um, fully purchased from the side of Vega 2 uh, quite often uh, ever since it doesn't give ability power anymore but ability haste you're looking for other stats in that department but either way we need some superhero plays from go to some picks by the uh, Zoe as well from Ronaldo Karim with a carry build coming through here looking to finish out the Divine Sundra 2 
but they're just not in a position where they're the ones setting the tempo. They need to rely on a mistake from Mirage, which is quite crazy Absolutely. once again, some considering the circumstances between the two teams. We spoke about as a team go previously. We've mentioned it in other games, especially when back in the the early weeks of the inception of the league, we spoke about how they can be kind of hesitant around the big blue, the big purple worm, how sometimes it can end up costing them. They don't have the, the exact finesse to kind of finish off that objective sometimes, and that could be a time for Mirage to strike in this game. A team that don't really have anything to lose in this matchup. You know, they want to get the win here, obviously, but they're coming up against stronger opponents. They need to take these risks is actually go to have their backs up against the wall. Not exactly a affair that we were expecting to unfold in this game. No, but to be fair though, remember, like this means so much for Mirage. The more wins they can get this early in the season, the further away from relegation true. they can true. put themselves. So while it's like, oh yeah, I mean, from a pride perspective, we don't have too much to lose from goal. You don't want to throw a game away like this one. I can tell that there must be nerves from a team like this who's been struggling to really find their footing, even dropping games to Oakland as well, who's probably their biggest contender in terms of moving away from this relegation as of right now. So definitely do not want to drop the ball. One minute for the Mountain Drake that would be sold for go. You cannot drop the ball again. Bad Lulu got caught before the next, uh, the objective just beforehand. Cannot allow himself or any member right now from the side of Mirage to make the same mistake before this objective spawns. Absolutely, and they've got to all be on the same page here. Otherwise, that page will be getting ripped out of the book. It will be another loss to the tally. And like you say, Gouldborg, although the pressure might not be on in the way that I've stated, but I have somewhat missed out on the fact that they do need to pick up every win they can get their hands on. But Go actually in a position whereby with this Callista, with the duo here, they actually have the benefit of the choice here. We speak about between the Baron, between the Dragon have a lot of time to buy here if they do end up going for that choice, whereas Mirage are more locked into denying this soul. But look at the items now. Rabbit and Death Camp have just been fulfilled from the side of Vega. I don't, I'm actually not too sure how much ability power he has of right now. But moving into these next objectives, one member gets caught by Event Horizon, they die. It's that simple. They don't have a strong tank. No extra resistances. No magic resist has been bought as of right now, except Merc Treads on the Rakan. So this is going to be extremely dire if anyone's get caught by the Baker. Absolutely, Wagner are going to have to do so much. Ronaldo goes in, tries to find a little bit of damage, does find a little bit onto Cody's son. Memento's going to have to go for a big steal here. Can he find it? No, he doesn't. That is going to be the soul going the way of Go. And immediately, it is going to be a Memento who gets blown up. Ronaldo over to the wall, finds his target finally. Hostile takeover is going to stop them from going too much further forward. New Q with the Ws, trying to find the slows that will get them into this fight here. With one man down, Memento, Go seem primed to be going towards this barren area with the soul now. Reem going aggressively. It's a flash out from Rangjim. Smiley's gone aggressively forward. They're trying to find Cody Sun. Wagner has found a flash here and at a drop of a hat. So aggressive, the snapping turtle of the LFL. They find Cody Sun now. And with 10 seconds onto Memento, they're going towards this barren area. Ronaldo's going to have to track back a little bit, play that false nine position. Falsify the onslaught of Mirage if they can try and get into this barren area. Bad Lulu, not going to have much Meganar now. Going to have to try and stack that up. They go off to the side now. The Baron's going quite low. I believe it's around 5k or so now. 1k actually gets taken with no questions asked. And go just like that. They managed to find that memento in the game way back in their favor. But I can't believe that's just gifted to them. Even at the beginning, Mirage were the one who was like hovering on towards the Drake side. They then completely forfeit their own priority because they have to worry about too much about the Baron. And the fact you have that Vega, the fact you have Predator, the fact you have Renato and Twitch, they never played towards it. It was just momentum that was sent forward and they said, you know what, momentum, you steal this, great. If you don't, ah, I guess we're a little bit screwed. Yeah, completely. And speaking of being screwed, this could be the case of those <laughs> nails. Those nails in that coffin, Goldboard, because Mirage now, you've got to feel as if when you're kind of so desperately craving these wins and you have this kind of moment of elation where you think guys we're finally doing it, and the plane just crashes into the ground like that they're just showing so much hesitation now it's now now it's time for go nails in hand hammer in hand as well to really put those nails in that coffin really cement themselves with this massive gold lead further exacerbate this barren power play and they can do it with all of these outer turrets being available and crucially, it's Rangjin as well who's playing Spirit Pushing, one of the few members that can actually stop the Siege from coming through here. They have sent him out on the side lane, and while he does a lot of damage with the extra ability power he has accumulated over his stacks and a rapid and step cap, I feel like you're giving away a lot here where you can stay competitive. But maybe they are just Absolutely. waiting for Summoner's spell before they really want to get active. 
No one's backing just yet. Rangjun seems like he want to contest these objectives, so they're trading inhibitor turret for inhibitor turret potentially. I don't like this. I feel like, like you're saying, Gulborg, he's the only one that can really stop the siege here from go stop the onslaught. He still hasn't based. He's still committing for that tier three top lane turret, the inhibitor turret. And can Mirage hold on because the inhibitor's gone down now. He's going to be taking it for one of his own. But Vygnum, it looks like he's gone for an aggressive engage here. Kareem is into stasis. Teleport is coming back now. He's bought a little bit of time here. Doesn't get that inhibitor. You almost feel like you're going to commit to it. Did smell almost blood here. New Q is not going to be getting engaged upon by Bad Loot. He can't quite find the range. Inhibitor was actually finally taken in that top side. And miraculously, Mirage do find a one for one in the inhibitor. Yeah, that's actually crazy considering the circumstances. I did not believe that was going to happen. Actually, a little bit curious to see why no one was set back. But I guess it's also the fact that he's actually going to deal with the Vega in a one on one situation. Ronaldo. Ooh. Ronaldo in the box. And absolutely lethal this game in terms of finding these. Reflet engages, he's going to almost get caught up by that event horizon, but you have to ask questions about whether that would have done too much. With the Baron as well, Ooh, these sorry. top lane waves. Getting tagged too, and this is also where it's so crucial. If you get hit by one bubble, it's not only just the Battle Star that's going to be the follow-up, it's also the Seri W. Uh, so that's actually so much poke damage. That's going to come through. Two inhibitors for the price of one, considering the circumstances. Actually not too bad for Mirage. They were probably going to be losing some of these objectives anyway, unless they decided to fight. Um, so I think an important thing to bring up is that I think it tips it it tips it slightly in the edge of Gove just with if it was a one for one trade I would heavily favor Mirage just because the inhibitor waves you're gonna have to be clearing are on the way to your next neutral objective in terms of your lines and travel plans of communication for your team whereas uh, Go are gonna have to always have someone responding to those waves when, and there's no teleports available for this team so there is a bit of a mobility gap in that regard but I feel like with the superior macro that's been demonstrated so far it shouldn't be too much of a problem but i think the important thing to know is that it can be i think uh, the, the fact that the game is still on the knife's edge while it suddenly go coming through with the priority with the tempo and with them being uh, the seizure of mirage make no mistake once again one good event horizon from rangjun and the member is blown up that is just how simple it is at this point in time completely vehemently agree with you there gulborg as memento is going to get caught up over the wall here but not going to not much going to be coming from it. I like this from Go. Obviously, the impending Elder, you'd think that a lot of teams would drop the ball somewhat in terms of the pressure they're putting out onto the map. But they are just keeping that up, even 50 seconds before it. Has that slight vision there. They know that if they just play with these waves here, Memento, Mirage are never going to be able to walk out of their base here. Never really going to be able to contest it. They're able to quell that top lane push and then move towards that when it spawns up. Cream just hovering in the mid lane, being the one leading into super minions, making sure that the precious does still reach the side of Mirage. And as you just set yourself 30 seconds on towards this Drake, they have the pressure of the bot side with super minions pushing in. They have the pressure of the mid lane with the mid lane super minions pushing in as well. And thus they're able to just take Ooh. control over the jungle for Mirage. It's going to be so difficult for them to get entrance there. Crucially, there is a really good pink ward in the back of, well, not per se the Drake pit, but close to the tri push at the bottom lane. Uh, which really just gives them a good TP agency if you want to move Rangjun and Bedlulu in there. Rangjun's TP almost being up and available, but this Elder Drake, it's going live and it's coming in two seconds. Yeah, they're going to start it up straight away. And Mirage, really, you can't be hesitant because if you lose this Elder Dragon, you surely lose the game. Come on, nice. Mirage. Let's see a sign of life from you. Don't just let this go down here. Memento, you've got to get in there. You've got to go a bit faster here. He's W'd over the wall. Going to have to flash. Go into the pit. They've tried to find Nuku, but the Elder's just going to go straight down. Why would you go for Nuku when the Elder's getting taken? And Rangjin and Memento, they're going to be the ones getting taken out. Baffled. And it's just disappointing from Mirage. The hesitation from them just being a rampant affair continuously. Oh, hey, Cody, gonna find a Cody. Return kill. Cody popping off here somewhat. Going to try and find a kill on two. Kareem can't quite do it. Gets knocked up nah, by Vignerum. That is going to be the end of the game. And it's a game where it just it's disappointing from Mirage. It's just never able to. Oh, Vignerum. It's his nose on the wall there. This is Vignerum's job to stop Bad Lulu from basing here. They're going to tell him. Oh, he's going to TB. Okay, nothing he's to stop gonna... me right now. Yeah, nothing to stop him. He's able to walk out here. I would have actually liked it and preferred it if he teleported to the top wave here, by the way. Yeah, I mean, make I think it, he's going to lose either way, but yeah, for sure. You could have, you, had, you would have had a better base call then, perhaps. They have time yeah, as like, five seconds on momentum, 13 seconds on Rangju, and I'm not too sure he's going to be back in time. He's going to get drowsied up, though. Memento is available, but yeah, that's going to be the end of that game. 
unfortunately. I never really got my moment. I said to you, I wanted to do a big swoo moment, but Ronaldo, it's never really found. I feel like Mirage never really offered up any opposition into Kareem the Dream, Benzema and Ronaldo. They're just kind of the strike force of Real Go. This was not kind of your, your El Clasico that you wanted from this game, was it, Gulbo? It felt like Mirage geared up to a point where they were in control of the game, and then they just lost it. It wasn't really necessarily the fact that, you know, Go beat them in a stellar team fight. It was just, it came down to the soul. It was just gifted. Then they died one by one, and Go got barren. And then all of a sudden, they just took control. It, it's just such, such an awkward game watching for Mirage. And 